You have questions. I sometimes have answers. Bear's ready, I'm ready, are you ready? Be woo! Rob in Discord, why do people twitch in the middle of their sleep and scare the be whoop out of me? You go through different stages of sleep and when you're in your deepest stage of sleep, you actually turn off uh, your musculoskeletal movements. That neurological system shuts down. But sometimes when you're going in between stages, it doesn't fully shut down and you're still in sleep and you're dreaming. So some of those movements actually do get through. Bear once did that too and he kicked me. I was upset with him. What actually causes the sensation of an itch? Well, this is a complex process that's primarily histamine driven. There is a specific type of nerve cell fiber known as a C fiber. These are sort of the receptors that actually initiate the sensation of an itch. Usually a response to like a mechanical or chemical process. It's an inflammatory response. It's a form of an inflammatory response. Discord, Naomi multifandom. Why are vaccines usually administered in the shoulder? Well, it's a great muscle, deltoid muscle muscle, a lot of circulation, it's quick, it's easy, you don't have to get really fully undressed in order to make that injection happen. Back in the day, we used to use the gluteus maximus or the buttock. Now it's a little bit invasive and it's easier to just go in the shoulder and do the same thing. YouTube, the house office. Why are you a fluffy cinnamon roll I must protect? First of all, I ain't no cinnamon roll, okay? The reason I ain't no cinnamon roll is because while I am delicious, I am healthy. I'm like a doctor? <laughs> I even sense it's coming. Yeah, no, but you don't know what direction it's coming no from. There's no preparing. You don't know what the you word is gonna get be. get ready for something like that. What can cause a constant ringing in someone's ears other than loud music noise? What can get rid of it? This is really interesting because tinnitus is a constant ringing in the ears and it can be a ringing, could be a buzzing, it's all sorts of sounds that can happen. And a lot of times the reason why my patients come in is as a result of cerumen impaction or earwax blockages. Another thing that causes it is sensorineural hearing loss. You actually develop hearing loss for one of many different reasons. And as a result of losing actual hearing, you start hearing ringing in your ears, which is manual manufactured by the actual nerve that transmits the sound. A lot of people think it means you're hearing something. It actually could be a form of hearing loss. That's why it's very important to always get it checked out. Discord Ariel, a lot of medical shows, movies, you see med students shocked at being exposed to cadavers for the first time. Does this ever happen in real life where seeing a dead person for the first time, a med student will get sick or faint? Yeah, it happens. Also the fumes of the formaldehyde are pretty stenchy. I don't know if that's a word, but I, I was kind of in awe the first time that I saw them. But the scary part was when I was studying for for an exam late Friday night, that was for an exam on Monday, being alone in a cadaver lab, in the dark, hearing noises, thunderstorm outside. No bueno. Discord, Jess Michio. I always get a runny nose because of spicy food. What is that about? That is about capsaicin. It is a nutrient that is found in spicy foods that actually bind to specific receptors in your body giving you the sensation of burning. There's no actual burning happening. It's tricking your body to think it's on fire. And as a result, your body protects itself by trying to lubricate the area, releasing mucus, et cetera. It's a great way to clear your sinuses, by the way. I'm considering buying a posture corrector. Do they really work? Generally speaking here, I would say no. I want you, when you come in with a poor posture, is to figure out A, what's causing it, and B, to actually allow your body to fix it. Or if it's bad enough posture for an anatomical concern, refer you to an orthopedic specialist to figure out why that's happening. Posture correctors almost end up doing more harm than good in many cases, where they weaken your core muscles, your stability muscles, and as a result, making you more likely to get injured. There are certain ones on the market for specific conditions that may work, but I would generally try and stay away unless your doctor absolutely recommends them. Discord, Kristen G. What up, Discord? For those of you who don't know, we have a private Discord where we chat, Patreon members only, sign up down below. What's the best way to get electrolytes after a hard workout without adding sugar? Electrolytes are not added through sugar. Electrolytes are essentially salts that your body needs to function. And the way that you get these is by eating foods or beverages that contain those electrolytes. Sodium doesn't taste great after a workout, but after a grueling one, it really does help you absorb the water and stay more hydrated. Back in the day, they used to use pickle juice. It's true, tastes good too. Not bad, I like it. I like pickles. Dill? <laughs> Is there a way for a civilian to test and see what kind of nutrients their body has a lot or little of? I'm always confused about what to eat and it would be great to know if I'm eating too much or too little of something. Currently, there's no such thing on the market. Yes, we can do specific blood tests to see if you're low on certain vitamins or if you're anemic and things like that. But generally, we don't screen for these things. If you feel great and you have no symptoms, there's no point looking for them. Because a lot of times, if you feel good and your lab value is a little bit off, we still decide not to treat the value. Because the reality is we treat the patient, not the lab 
lab values. Why do our stomachs growl? Usually because they're angry. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The reason they growl is because of peristalsis. The muscles in the stomach actually try and churn the food in order to be act as a form of mechanical digestion. Because remember, there's multiple types of digestion. There's chemical, mechanical, mechanical being chewing, peristalsis, the stomach churning, and that makes a growling noise. Also, remember, when you're dealing with foods and there's bacteria inside our gut, there's also gases released. That gas, as it makes its way through the digestive system, can make those noises. And then at the end of the day, we fart. Lance McPhee YouTube, how often should you shower and wash your hair? I have this argument so often because there are people who say you have to shower every single day and sh wash your hair every single day. And that is in fact not reality. The decision to wash your hair should really be individualized one, a holistic one, meaning that yes, if your hair is very greasy or your scalp is itchy or there's a lot of dandruff, maybe a good reason to wash your hair. Yes, if you come home and you're smelly from the gym, please shower. But otherwise, like if you just had a normal day, it's not absolutely oh. mandatory that you shower. And it's not absolutely mandatory that you need to use oh. shampoo. And depending on your hair type, also decides how often you should be washing your hair. Those with very fine hair, maybe every day, every other day. Those with more textured hair can go several days without washing their hair. But know that the more often you wash your hair, the more that you actually take off some of those important oils off of your scalp, you could actually cause damage, more irritation, dry out your hair, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to showering, same thing. Your skin doesn't like hot water. Your skin doesn't like having soap all over it all the time. In fact, your shower should be really ideally short, like three or four minutes just focusing on like your groin, your armpits. That's about it. Why do so many people set a step goal count of 10K a day? Is there any scientific reason for this? Yeah, the 10K thing doesn't really mean much. Look, however, whatever way you choose to get active, it will be healthy for you. If you're increasing from 5K steps to 7K steps, amazing. If you've been working out one day a week and you've gone to three days a week, amazing. I will never be that rigid doctor that's like, oh, I see by your watch here, you've uh, averaged 9,999.9 steps. I'm disappointed. It's time for me to cut you as a patient. Is eating burned food bad for you? Actually, it is, Neko Moozer. You actually create all these uh, cancer-causing chemicals when you eat burnt foods. So ideally, you wanna stay away from chard as much as possible. In fact, marinate, marinating your meats help prevent some of those hydrocarbons and other toxic nutrients from forming. They're not even nutrients, uh, chemicals from forming. Actually, eating greens with your meats helps decrease some of the cancer-causing minerals as well. Keep calling them different things, nutrients, minerals. They're chemicals. Seaweed time. Does banging one's head from the side actually shake water out from your ears or is that something they do in cartoons? Don't bang your head. That's how concussions happen. Just jump and the gravity will do the trick. <laughs> if someone gets stabbed in the stomach, will the stomach acid seep out into their body and start dissolving their organs? Uh, yeah, it's very problematic when someone has a stomach injury. Like it won't completely dissolve their organs, but it'll cause damage. It'll cause a peritonitis. Hyper Shadow Sniper 76, when you're performing chest compressions, you break the ribs, right? Couldn't that broken rib puncture an organ below because you're putting so much pressure on it? You can, but guess what? If you're performing chest compressions, that person's already dead and you're trying to bring them back to life. So anything you can do to continue their time by circulating the blood that's already in the circulatory system that has some oxygen left, you're buying them some extra added survival time. That's why you don't do chest compressions on people who are alive. Tara Discord, is there a way to suppress my gag reflex? I literally gag every time I brush my teeth. I had a patient tell me the exact same thing. What I told him is, this is kind of a weird trick, put his thumb, tuck his thumb underneath his fist when he's brushing his teeth. And for some reason, this worked very well for him. Easy enough to try, but if it's happening quite often, seeing your doctor and figuring out if everything's okay in your oral cavity is probably a smart move. Sam Bowers, from three feet away. You said there's a much higher fiber content eating a fruit itself as opposed to just drinking the juice. Do I also lose a lot of fiber in homemade smoothie because the fruit is getting broken down by a blender or does the blender not break it down enough to alter the fiber volume? Good question you, Sam? And the answer is yes. The, the beginning of that mechanical digestion by your smoothie actually does decrease some of that fiber content because your body has to do less work now. Thanks, Dr. Mike. I watched the office medical scenes and reacted to them right here. I bet you didn't know that they did chest compressions on the office. CPR, CPR. As always, stay happy and healthy.